Hi, how you doing? So welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. And this week I'm going to be editing a VIP member's image, Clive Wellburn. So he sent me this image because he has taken some shots of a musician in stage lighting. And this is pretty common if you go to a concert or if you shoot at weddings, that kind of thing. You're left to deal with these lights that are really, really tricky to tame and it can be a bit of a nightmare. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to how to work with what you've got and how to really tame the light so you get skin tones that look fairly natural and you also just tame them lights and just just manipulate them so you can uh, get an image that looks as interesting as what it what it was when you were there so you can see on the left this is the original and on the right this is kind of my uh, my finished edit so i'm going to reset this and just bring you back to the beginning and just walk you through what I've done okay so the first thing I want to talk to you about is actually shooting in raw so this is a raw image you can see it's a NEF file and the reason why you want to be shooting in raw is because of the sheer amount of data that we've got in the in the uh, file you can see at the top here there's lots and lots of data and lots of information in this now this was a JPEG you would really struggle to do anything with it because you, there's just not the data there. So the raw file is always going to give you a lot more information to play with and to uh, manipulate. You can basically pull this apart and it won't completely ruin the image. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is looking at the actual image is the first thing I want to do is look at the white balance because we can change this and get pretty much uh, completely different looks just by doing that. You can see we go from one extreme to the other we we do have a blue and a red vibe going on here so there is a mixture actually coming from this light uh, this light is uh, one that you can see it's got these circles around and how they work is um, they have different colored gels within them so they can project 50 percent red 50 percent blue or you can mix it up and, and and that's what's going on with this light so the first thing you want to do with any image like this is to go to the white balance and just start playing around until you get it to a point that you like. So I'm going to I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go just shy of 4000 Kelvin. So around yeah, around 4000 Kelvin around there that mark. That's quite nice. I think that's a good good base to start with. We've got mainly blues in there, but we have still got some pinks, some magentas going on in there. I'm going to come to the exposure and I'm just going to drop this ever so slightly just because I want to just darken it just a little bit just so we can pump some uh, some information back into them blacks so and just make them a little bit darker okay the next thing I'm going to do is inc increase the contrast and lower the black so I'm going to increase the contrast to around 60 around that mark 65 that's pretty good and I'm going to drop these blacks and what that enables you to do if we if we come to here the blacks what this does is it it creates contrast between the subjects and the background and the, the colors become a lot more vivid and it gives you that sense of it's almost a, an illusion of depth and you can see what happens there when i do that okay so it's just really giving you a little bit more depth to the image and it can look really really good so in this particular image i'm going to go to around minus 47 48 around that mark there uh, and that again is giving you just just a little bit more depth and separates the subject from the background there all right the next thing then is looking at the highlights now he's wearing a white shirt so there's not much we can do with these highlights we don't want to we don't want to start pushing these up because again it's going to overexpose them areas also his skin will start to overexpose, you can see here. Um, so we've got to be really careful with that. So what I'm actually going to do is just drop this ever so slightly because I just want to take the sting out of them highlights. And what I'm going for is a bit more of a, a darker image rather than a completely vivid shot because the vivid images can look a little bit too over-processed, in my opinion anyway. And uh, they can end up looking a little bit gimmicky, so that's that's why I'm doing it. 
So I think with the um, the next with the shadows, we should bring that up a little bit because obviously it's looking a little bit dark in some of them areas around the suit. So I'm going to push them up a little bit, maybe around 45 around there. That's quite good. It's brought enough detail back where we can see separation on the guitar and the uh, the mic stand and a little bit more detail around the actual suit there. Now we can select him later on and just increase it a little bit a little bit higher with the with the brush tool which we'll probably do in a bit okay so moving on i'm just going to add a little bit of clarity not too much because we don't want to start pulling the image apart if we go too far you can see what's going to happen there and if we pull it back it's just going to go soft so i just want to add enough just to help us with that separation so around 10 11 is quite good for this so getting on to the vibrance and saturation, I think it's important that we tame these colors. So I'm going to bring the vibrance down to about minus 35. So I just want to take that sting out. And then the vibrance, I'm going to push that up a little bit to about 21 just to bring the color back. And that just gives us um, a little bit more of a, a more natural looking, so to speak, image by just bringing that down. Okay. So moving on to the curves tool, this is where it can get interesting. So we can do a lot here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mat the black. So I'm going to click the bottom here and I'm going to drag these up. So we start matting them blacks off. And then I'm going to come to the midpoint with a grazer and just bring them down. So we can just add a little bit more, a little bit more darkness into the shot. And then I'm going to come up to the whites and just darken them ever so slightly too. There we go. So you can see a before and after just of the curves to what that's given us by matting them blacks off. It just gives us a little bit more of a, a fog effect, so to speak. So a little bit more atmospheric. So if we just look at the before and after, even to this point, you can see the route that I'm going down with regards to the colors and the way that we're just trying to tame everything. And we're trying to look for a way where we can bond everything together and, and the, Doing that is, is by bringing the vibrance down, bringing that saturation up a little bit and just matting off them blacks. And I think we could probably bring them blacks down a little bit more. There's always a tipping point and it is around there. You can see that it just disappears and it just comes in when I push it up there, you can see. So we want it on that tipping point, which is about there on this particular image. Right, next up, let's come down to the HSL, so the hue, saturation, luminance. Let's start with the hues. So I'm going to bring the reds right down 100%. I'm going to click the oranges up. I think they could do with going more into the yellow sort of spectrum, so around 34. Same with the yellows, up to around 33, 35, around there. That's good. And going to bring these greens up there's not actually a lot of green in here um, I'm going to make the aquas I think yeah I'm going to push them up to 100% there's not a lot in there but what is in there I want it to be blue rather than a um, rather than a green sort of uh, tone so the blues there's a lot in there so what I want to do is just bring this down a little bit so we're just lighting it about there that's good and the main two colors is purple and magenta. So I'm going to bring the purple up because I want that to be dominant color because it is in there, obviously. And then the magenta, I'm going to bring that down slightly, I reckon to around minus 70 around that mark around there. That looks pretty good. So we can just see there what that's done. It's just brought out that lovely magenta and we've deepened the blues a little bit. There we go. So come to the saturation. Uh, let's boost the reds up. I, think, I don't think there's much. No, there's not much orange in there, so we can kind of forget that. I think the main colors are, are down here on this area. So let's just bring the aqua up to plus 20. Uh, the blues. So again, let's push that to 100%. And let's bring this purple. Let's just bring this down a little bit to minus 27, 28 around there. That looks good. And then onto the magenta. Let's just push that up a little bit, but not too much. It's around there. 
Right, let's go to the luminance. So the luminance is obviously the brightness of the image. So on the red, let's push that up because we want that red to be quite dominant in this shot, which it is anyway. So around there, that looks pretty good. Um, let's just take the sting out the purple and the magenta, I think. In fact, we could probably add a little bit more magenta in there. So there we go, about 15, that's pretty good. So if we look at what we've done with the hue, saturation, and luminance, you can see that I've I've pumped a lot of that magenta back in and that blue, and it's just given us a little bit more of an atmospheric shot with them colors. So I'm just bringing out and working with what is there, basically. Okay. Um, now we can um, do some uh, more fine tune it in, in a bit with with regards to the skin tones on the face um, and uh, bring some detail back out in the in the suit and we'll do that in a bit now you can leave the color grading um, because you've got pretty much you know there's a lot going on within that but if you do want to add any any color grading then I would stick to the shadows and the mid tones I wouldn't touch the highlights because the highlights in this are there's there's a lot going on in there so if you want to just help along uh, some of the colors so for instance the mid tones here we could we could maybe go to a yellow just to cool it off a little bit so we're going opposite to what the blue is so the yellow there and i've got a saturation of about 17 so let's just bring that down a little bit because i want it to be about nine or ten so there we go, that's pretty good. Um, that that will do for that. So let's go to the shadows and uh, the shadows I would stick with the blue because it's already in there and just again, just a little bit of saturation about 19, 18 around there. That works pretty good. Um, and that's kind of in keeping with what we've got going on already. So if we look at that, you can see there that, that blue is just a little bit deeper Okay, that works quite well, I think, especially up around this area up here. Okay, so moving on, um, we can add some sharpening to this. Now, what I would do is probably add around 10, and I would probably drop it down to half a pixel. So 0 0.5. Detail, leave that at 50, and then push the masking up, holding the Option key down, and just push that until we get just the outs outlines of everything so that's that's pretty good noise reduction we can push this up to about 20 so we want to keep the detail at 50 uh, keep the contrast as it is and same with the color i think uh yeah, drop that down to about 20 the same that should be good uh, keeping the detail and the smoothness there at 50. that looks pretty good so you can see it's just around the edges that most of that is working. So if we're going a little bit closer, you'll see there. It's just helping with a little bit of information in the back there. That looks pretty good. Um, okay, that's uh, another thing that I like that I liked when I was messing around with this was the actually changing the uh, lens correction. So what I'm going to do is is just play around with this because we can we can obviously distort the image as much as we want. Now, I like this at 100%, but obviously we need to constrain crop. What that's going to do is just give us a really sort of ultra wide image. So we're, we're really bending the way that this image looks. So if I if I bring that back to where it was, it you can see it's okay, but this just gives it, in my opinion, just makes it look a little bit cooler. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep it at 100 and I'm going to crop this, I think, to a square, and I think that'll look pretty good. So the other thing that I want to do is add a vignette to this. Um, so I'm just going to bring the vignette in. It's quite going to be quite a heavy vignette, I think. So around 50, and the midpoint, I could push that in to about 35. And then roundness, I think, if we keep that, yeah, that plus eight nine and then i want to make sure that that's feathered quite well so about 70 on there uh, that's pretty good leave the grain off and then let's come up to the top and uh, let's come to the crop tool 
and let's go to a one to one so we're going to go for a square there and let's just crop this in to about there I think that looks pretty good um, if I just go a little bit higher there we go that looks pretty interesting doesn't it so let's make some global adjustments now sorry some uh, local adjustments so click on the uh, mask tool up here let's select the brush and what I'm going to do is the mask is usually red but obviously because the face is got a pink magenta in it I'm going to go with uh, a green just so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to start painting in the face so it's the color tones on the on the face is the most important thing um, I'm not too worried about anything else like the, the hands and things like that but if you wanted to do that you could um, but I think with this image it's it's okay so let's take the mask overlay away come to the saturation and just bring that saturation down to around yeah it's about minus 60 that's pretty good so that that will work uh, and just give us a little bit of a um, yeah a little bit more of a of a uh, a better looking skin tone and you can see there let's just zoom in and you can see what that looks like before and after so we've just taken that sting off the face a little bit and I think that works really really well let's create another mask using the brush tool and let's just start painting in this suit and maybe the bottom of the guitar as well so it's just some of the darker areas here okay so let's just take the overlay off and let's just have a look I think these shadows are gonna help us along a little bit and maybe just boost that exposure up a little bit so we're just bringing out some detail and adding some uh, highlights into the darker most darkest areas there we go I think that looks good I'm gonna come back to the crop and I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit because I don't want to cut off his feet too much there we've got the bottom of his feet in so there we go that's that's what I would do that would be the finished article now if you look at the before and after you can see there we've got like I said at the beginning a much more vivid color now we could we could bring up the vibrance a little bit but I, I just think it it just ruins the skin tone so if you want it a little bit more punchier then uh, maybe bring up the saturation a little bit if you want to keep that color um, but I, I prefer it, like I said, a little bit less vibrant. I think that works really well. And uh, I think as well, just making the image super wide and the little trick of uh, just completely changing the uh, distortion of the image so we get this sort of barrel effect. I think that can look look quite good and look quite interesting. Um, so I'm just maybe just straighten it off a little bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think that looks quite interesting and uh, just gives it a, a, a different, completely different look. So that's what I would do. That's my tips for uh, editing images like this that you've got a lot of color going on. Um, but again, a lot of this is personal preference as well. So you can you can tweak this until your heart's content. Um, there's no wrong or right way of doing it. But for me, I think the most important thing is just trying to get skin tones so they look a little bit more natural and uh trying to keep a little bit a little bit of punch in this um just to make it interesting so i hope that's helped and uh i look forward to seeing your images like this good luck if you're attempting to do something like this because it's uh, it's quite a challenging challenging task but uh keep at it and you'll be absolutely fine so i hope that's helped and i'll see you in the next video